Being a single woman in LA can be awesome. The nightlife, the beach, the shopping, the fun. But somehow, all of that seems to change when you're middle-aged. My name is Fran, Argentina-born, single, and yep, middle-aged. My midlife crisis hit me hard, so I decided to fight back by embarking on a quest. Visiting all 50 states before I'm 50 and taking you along with me. Morning. Okay, world, well, here we go. Planes, trains, and automobiles, buckle up, because this is going to be one heck of a ride. Welcome to My 50 Before 50. Warning, I have an accident. Sometimes it may be hard to understand what I'm saying. Occasional grammatical mistakes may be heard or read. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello, everyone. And welcome to round three of my incredible 50 before 50 journey. This round will be the longest of them all, and it will take us through 10 very different states. Are you ready for the ride? Let's do it. Before we even got to our destination, I came across Twin Falls. In the southern part of Idaho sits the city of Twin Falls, getaway to Snake River Canyon. The impressive Perrin Bridge crosses over it with magnificent views to both of its sides. Absolutely a worthy stop. Our first Idaho stop, Windy. So now, and with the storm behind us, at last, we can make it to our final destination, the little town of Stanley, Idaho. The road to it was just beautiful, and with an elevation of over 6,000 feet, I had to stop a few more times along the way to appreciate the views. Pretty high up, plenty of snow. Beautiful. At long last, by 8 p.m., I made it to my hotel. Let me tell you guys, it is quite surreal when you finally get to see the place you've been looking up online for so long in real life. And the Redfish Riverside Inn did not disappoint. Third leg. Third leg. First destination. Let me show you this place. But with such an exhausting drive behind me, there was nothing left to do but to go rest and call it a night. Good morning. On our way to Ketchum, which is a super cute town um, nearby. I'm gonna get a massage because my back 
it's killing me and this is only the first state out of 10 that we're gonna be driving through so I better be in good shape the neighboring city of Ketchum close to Sand Valley is the little big town of the area so after my massage I was ready to grab some lunch yes of course it needed to include some Idaho potatoes duh and spend the rest of the day walking around its super cute downtown this is their Starbucks visiting some of its many stores and breweries hello Tom And since the following day was the day when I would get to do all the exploring, it was back to the hotel driving through beautiful Sun Valley. This scenery is like pictures from a tale or something. It's just mesmerizing. I was not expecting this when it came to Idaho. Happy to be wrong. And sure enough, pretty soon we were following another storm. I really hope we don't get this weather tomorrow. Ouch. You hear that? So you guys, this is not on camera, but just listen. Back at the hotel, I turned the TV on on a documentary about Adam West. Yes, that Adam West. And they were talking about the place where he spent the last 30 years of his life. Any guesses? Yep. Ketchum, Idaho, the exact same place where I was just coming from. Now, is that a freaky coincidence or what? Anyway, see you tomorrow in the same bat channel. Good morning, Idaho. Good morning. This is breakfast. And what better way to start the day and with a breakfast like this, and a view like that. Oh, Idaho. But enough already. Time to get going to discover this beautiful place. And that's it. My faithful companion here, Rowdy. Got a new sticker about mountains. And we're about to walk little downtown in Stanley. We made it into Wall Street. Tiniest downtown of them all. Yeah, the downtown may be small, but those views are well worth it of our first little hike of the day. Hello from Stanley, Idaho. I chose this little town because I came across an article that said it was a hidden gem. And it kind of is exude not that many things to do this time of year plenty of things to do in some other times of the year then again not the things i usually do i don't ski i don't do anything to, I mean, you know i live behind a computer in l.a so um but if you do any of those things oh my gosh great place great place and it kind of forces me to relax which let's face it i need it so super happy to be here. Okay, time for hike number two. Yes, second hike of the day. And since the roads were closed, whoopsie, I decided to claim them as mine. Okay, let's do this or we'll never get finished. The Redfish Lake is the largest one in the Sawtooth National Recreation Area, 
a beautiful and vast land full of mountains and wilderness, which offers incredible views and plenty of activities for his visitors, like fishing, camping, bird watching, and hikes, just to name a few. And hiking was indeed my activity of choice, more specifically, the Redfish Trailhead, which takes you all the way up to the highest lake views. This trail was a bit challenging, since there were not that many clear marks, still quite a bit of ice and nobody around. But I persevered, and it paid off. I gotta be honest, I almost, I was this close to turning back because this was not an easy hike. There's still a lot of hard snow and I'm the only one here. So I'm like, I'm like going in the right direction. But again, totally worth it. But something happened on the way back. I got lost in my tracks and ended up in the middle of the mountain with no sense of direction for 10 full minutes. And remember, I'm the only one here. here. So I was panicking. Eventually I found my way back. <laughs> Thank God. But let me tell you. Yo, joking aside, that was really scary. So after my survival, injuries included, it was time to go back to my car for my final Idaho adventure. Oh, but before that. Okay, all very nice and dandy, but let me tell you, for somebody with OCD, this ain't right. Why? Why? We made it safely from um, the hike. And now we're gonna go check out another thing Idaho is famous for, hot springs. swimsuit and all but this is way too hot it's like boiling water so I'm sure it's great when you're freezing in, in the winter but yeah no <laughs> I just put my hand in my foot in and uh, I'm good for now Time to see Stanley for the very last time. Such a beautiful little town. Nothing left to do now but to have dinner at the only open restaurant. Well, at least I thought there was nothing left to do. And by the way, guys, the potatoes here are truly great. While at dinner, some locals invited me to go to the hot springs pools that night. Yep, it turns out there are pools, but only the locals know about them. So with a spectacular sunset sky as my counselor, and after sharing their names, phone numbers, pictures, and license plates with locals and friends, both in Argentina and the US alike, I decided to go. I did get a bit restless when I lost signal in the middle of the mountains. Let's face it, that's how every single scary movie begins. But this ended up being a one-of-a-kind experience. I don't really know what I'm doing, but you're about to find out. First of all, you choose one of the pools. Then pour some cold water into it so that you don't burn alive. Pretty important, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. 
soaking in the hot springs water is a unique experience and the perfect scenario for stargazing. And the Idaho sky was nothing but perfection. The following morning, before leaving this beautiful state, I paid a visit to the little ghost town of Custer. Not only was I following a tip from the locals I had met the day prior, but I was also following a pretty rough gravel road. I just say I'm glad I have new tires. This is a rough road. <laughs> Another hidden gem, this ghost town used to thrive during the gold rush era, especially after the neighboring town of Bonanza burned down. But as those days faded, so did Custer. Today, this is all that remains, preserved mostly thanks to its designation as a historic site back in 1981. again and by myself completely alone uh, I do know where the road is though <laughs> with my car so I'm not scared not too scared but uh but wow <laughs> so glad I found this place this is the little cherry on top before leaving Idaho well, it has to be my favorite part. The saloon, which is closed. But I can only imagine, because this is not a set, you guys. This is the real thing. This is the actual deal. This existed. The stories, the stories, the energy of these places. I'm completely in awe. I'm amazed. I'm amazed. As restoration efforts continue, you can still see many mining artifacts along the way, including mining pools and the impressive Yankee Fork Gold Dredge, one of the best preserved ones in the lower 48, and which you can visit seasonally. Yep, all 988 tons of it. It was time to leave Idaho, though I would get a bonus of its northern part over a month later on my way back home. But for now, goodbye to the gem state it is.